All right. Welcome to the Dean Bodie podcast. How's everybody doing? We're trying a little different angle here, different camera setup, so you can see me doing the podcast and um, see how this goes. I hear about the professional lighting, do all this stuff. You know what the professional lighting is over here in the Dean Bodie studio? Turn the light on. That's what it is. Turn the light on. <laughs> so, oh wow, Bodie's not in the shop this time, right? Not so easy when you don't have the selfie mode in and I can walk around as she's on the move. Booyah! There she is. We got Bodie. Bodie's in all this. Remember, Bodie's 90% of this business. I'm just 10%. She's the motivating factor. She's the muse. She's the producer, director. She gives me the energy to keep moving forward with this. That's how much I love her. And um, we're having a lot of fun doing this. And hope you're enjoying uh, what we're doing. So there's the boat. We got her. We'll flash her from time to time. Okay. And we did a nice video earlier today on the YouTube channel. Remember, Dean Bodie Show. Dean Bodie, D-E-A-N-B-O-D-I dash show. It's going to pop up on the YouTube channel. Dean Bodie podcast on Apple and wherever you get podcasts. And going to be a big shift coming up with Spotify. And we're on that platform. So we're also on Stitcher and Google, you know, and all of the, all of the fun uh, platforms. But with the Joe Rogan, man, all that buzz is going on with Joe Rogan and the $100 million deal and... By September, all his videos and his catalogs going to be shifted over there. You know, kind of reminds me of when um, Howard Stern went from mainstream radio, right? And uh, where he got picked up by Sirius uh, XM, I think it was called, uh, Satellite Radio. $500 million contract, something crazy like that. And, you know, you're going to lose a huge part of your audience, probably 80% in the beginning, then the subscription or however they're going to do it on Spotify um, will build that audience back up again. So pretty cool. I'm excited about doing this this way. We're going to do it differently from time to time. Who knows? This is like two for Tuesday. This is double shot Tuesday. This is, um, you know how it goes, right? Could be doing Maniac Mondays and Wacky Wednesdays and Throwback Thursdays and Freaky Fridays and um, I don't know. Shut up and listen Saturdays and sing along on Sundays. Yeah, we did a little sing along today, didn't we, with The Foreigner. You want to hear it? Go to the YouTube channel and listen to it, okay? And uh, I know my voice is not the greatest voice in the world, but it's about having fun. Be yourself. Sing along. Singing, put your favorite tunes in. Give yourself an attitude adjustment. That's what it does for me. And that old 80s stuff, I'm not just 80s. Don't push me, okay? Don't test me. I'll do Run DMC. I'll do uh, the new Godzilla rap with Eminem. I got that whole album. <laughs> Love Eminem. That new one. What a weird timing with that, too, is because he's probably going to win album of the year with that, hands down. He just kind of dropped that one out of nowhere, as he does. And he likes to surprise people. But this thing is the bomb. I highly recommend it. So I'm classical. I go to jazz. I go to, to rap, I go to hip hop, I'm mostly uh, an 80s rock guy and 70s and I'm all over the place, man. We'll go Beethoven one second and we'll go Foreigner and Hot Blooded the next. So uh, it's all good. It's all good. So we, um, we have a good one today, man. You're going to be going on a trip with me today when I had a paper route. Oh my gosh, we're also going to go to my second bartending job ever after my little two-week class at the bartending school, and then we fumbled around with a couple private gigs, and I was overwhelmed and sweated out those nerves and learned some hardcore stuff on the job training, as they say, and test my new skills, and now I'm fumbling around and using the jigger and cutting garnishes I never cut before and made my 50 bucks and I went home back in the day. Back in the day, that filled a few tanks of gas. I don't know, I might be back where it was right now and the prices. So this first job was my 18, when I was 18, was at the Red Lobster. Um, for about a year and a half, I worked there behind the bar. That was a good one too, man. That puts you right into the frozen drinks, you know, the strawberry daiquiris. They had all these 
uh, signature glass is like the lighthouse and the smooth sailing. You get to keep the glass. Um, so you learned, I think they had some ice cream drinks too, which came in handy later. It's good to get walloped by all of the different kinds of uh, cocktails because um, it, you know, each job you learn something new and that's the way you do it, man. I did what the nightclub business for over 12 years, easy. Um, and every bar was different. <clears throat> some like to use the jigger, some like to let you free pour, big free pour fan. Shout out to the free pour. Oh man, we're gonna get into that. We're not going to get, um, well, Scarlet O'Hara's, we did free pour, so that's a good thing. We didn't get tested though in the test tube rack like I did at, I'm gonna say it, Studebaker's. Uh, you didn't get a 90% on your test before your shift, you didn't go on. Right hand, left hand. And uh, the best managers, the best training, Oh my gosh, once you work there, you can work anywhere. Because the Friday's bartenders back in the day were top of the line. So very strict with the um, the poor tester and all. So much fun. But we're going to be talking about, we're going to go one bar at a time. Because each one's got its different stories and different vibe. But this one's going to be Scarlett O'Hara's. Shout out to Sunrise, Florida. This was like a tennis club type of um, atmosphere, okay? And we would get like old um, singing groups to come and perform, right? Uh, some of the old songs, like the doo-wop groups and things like that, they would show up and, and sing live. And what a gas that was, man. We had some real good talent coming in there. Um, we had a great happy hour crowd and um, the staff was awesome. And that was just a great time uh working at that place it was kind of a um you know not a nightclub atmosphere it was that happy hour spot man it was that happy hour at, where your regulars would come in and you know you'd keep that bombay gin in the cooler for bill when he went came up and he wanted that martini extra dry with the bombay and all of this kind of stuff going on and I worked there for a while, a year, maybe over a year and a, about a year and a half, maybe. And um, what a great place I was. One thing, that place was awesome. And I learned the recipe for the greatest, I'm telling you, hands down, the greatest Bloody Mary mix of all time. And you start off, okay, get ready. Get ready. We're giving, dropping some knowledge with the bartending and the Bloody Mary mix. So... The V8 juice, right? That's going in. You got the celery salt. We got the Worcestershire. We got the salt and pepper. We got the Tabasco. Um, what else is going in there? Uh, that's pretty much the majority of it. And then here comes the secret. That place isn't open anymore, so we're giving out the secret. We would take a little dish, fresh horseradish and pickle juice. You stir it around, dump that in there, and let that set, and you want to talk about a Bloody Mary mix. Ah, oh, man, you, that's the best hangover cure of all. Put the celery stock in there. You put the skewer um, with the cherry tomato, the cucumber, the big shrimp cocktail on there, right? Squeeze your lime on there. Yep. You got to season the rim of that glass with the Lowry seasoned salt, not the regular. There's a Bloody Mary. I'll put my Bloody Mary up against anybody's. This guy doesn't drink anymore. Now we're going with the sparkling water and that's how we do it now. But back in the day, man, it was fun with the cocktails and learning these different things and all. And Scarlett O'Hara's, what a great, perfect job for after um, the Red Lobster. It was just, man, I had like two days later, I had a job there. Um, shout, uh, also, I got to give credit to my stepfather at the time. Uh, he put a good word in for me. He did some business with them over there and boom, I was in. So I wanted to um, mention also, wow, down the street from uh, Scarlett O'Hara's, we would go out as a crew, of course, as you would do. Back in the day, the staff is like family. You go out together, you work together. Oh man, you uh, cry on each other's shoulder and go out with one another and break up with one another. <laughs> it was like, man, we had some reality shows back then. I wish that someone would have followed me with a camera with some of these bars. Would have made uh, definitely a great show 
on Discovery Channel, okay? So, um, down the street we had the Bombay Bicycle Club. What a great bar. And down a little further, we had the Banana Boat. Two great bars for after hours. Just great warm places with great decor and everybody just hanging out. These places were packed. It was just so that time where the bars were just all filled up. We had what, Bennigan's around the corner the other way, TGI Fridays up the road. Oh, what a time. So that's my Scarlett O'Hara's little thing there. And I'm gonna take you on a little trip right now for when I had a paper route, okay? You did, I did a paper route like nobody else did. This is not little Dean cruising around on his bicycle with the banana seat throwing the newspaper. I had my 71 Le Mans jacked up, gold color. I don't know what color this thing was because I, you know, this is gonna get me a little upset, but I had somebody from the vocational school use my car as a project and I let him paint my car and he ended up charging me money when he wasn't supposed to do that. It was supposed to be for his final exam and I was supposed to get it for free, but he collected some money. Needless to say, we had a little bad energy after that, <laughs> okay? But it was like a gold color. It was like a pea soup urine type of color. Black racing stripes and I remember the one stripe on the back was a little bit askew. And I had to look at that thing every time I walked to my car and I had to get over it because I know I didn't have him do it over again. It was, we were not getting along and it was too late and it was the final exam and he graduated and I just dealt with it. And if you didn't really know, unless you were driving behind me, you're gonna see it. Probably, hey, look at that guy. That one stripe is crooked. I wonder if he knows. Yeah, I knew, I knew but I still had so much fun with that car, with the shift kit in there and you drop it in low and you get at the red light and you gun it, then you hit the shifter, <clears throat> hear that little chirp. Uh, that little chirp was like the greatest thing ever when you're 20 years old and showing off. Oh my gosh. So that was the deal with the car. That's the car I use. It was jacked up with air shocks. I used the car to do my Winmore Village. Um, that was my paper route, the whole retirement village. And, um, excuse me, they knew that I was coming in that car to the point where they would be on the fourth floor, a couple of these older men waiting for me to throw it so they could catch it. I ended up really having a lot of fun with this job until you're going down to the Fort Lauderdale Strip you're hanging out with your friends. And all of a sudden I have to go into work at three in the morning. Everyone else is hanging out. I gotta go, see ya. I'm gonna go fold papers, throw them all in my car and then go around to Winmore and do it. And when I first started that job, it took me about three and a half to four hours to do it until I started getting it down and I didn't take the elevator up or run up the stairs. I learned how to, uh, here's the technique. Are you ready? There's techniques in everything to save you not only some time, but you know, this four hour thing had to stop. I got it shaved down to an hour and a half. So what I would do, remember these are four floors. Of course, lobbing it to the first floor in front of the door is easy. Second floor with the lighter papers, Monday, Tuesday, you threw a little sidearm line drive. Yes, I broke a window or two part of the job that came with it. You had to pay for it. It came out of your check. <laughs> and, uh, um, and the third floor was a little bit a little more of a lob, a little more oomph. But going up the elevator and the stairs, man, was like, uh, it would take you too long. Now you tell me if this would be easy or hard. That Sunday newspaper, the big fat one, right? Throwing that to the fourth floor so it lobs, boom, and lands on the floor in front of the door. Yes, I could do it. It took a little time, but the trick, the trick was to wipe a little sweat off of your shirt and then it would be a little tacky to the plastic bag on the paper, huh? And I would take it, I would bend all the way down. 
and I would jump off the ground and use every ounce of my body with my arm and I would throw it. As, I had to do it as hard as I could and it would just make it over the top and it would, sla <laughs> it would slam on the ground. And at four in the morning, it's pretty loud, <laughs> okay? It's pretty loud. But I anyway, I got to shave down to an hour and a half in that job, I don't know, after having to leave the strip and all my friends too many times in a row, I think after six weeks or maybe two months of that job, we had to end it. It wasn't my thing. This was, you know, you had to put the bill to bill the person. You'd stick that in the paper and they had to pay the bill. This was like a major process. And I'm thinking like cash money bartending compared to this. Not even close. You get spoiled with the bartending when you work in the right places and you're making cash and you're easily putting, you know, your hundred bucks or $150, $200 cash in your pocket after your shift. And when I got to the really awesome nightclubs, when we started really getting into the, to the limelight, the nightlife, the real hot spots, and you're putting five, 600 plus in your pocket cash, you don't want to do anything else. I tried the a little, little stint at the office depot and I tried, what was the other job? Oh, I tried working at Chili's. <laughs> these, are, these are a whole other podcasts I can do. At Chili's, uh, at the salad guy at four in the morning, you're chopping up salads and lettuce chopping and oh, you got it. And I tried to do that along with another bartending gig after two in the morning, getting up at four, chopping lettuce and getting yelled at by the manager because my chicken chunks were too big. I had to make them this big, not that big, this big, not that big. Done. The next, <laughs> after like an earful of that for a year or whatever, it was like I got up and I tried the calling in sick. And he was like, well, you got to really be here. And I'm like, I can't do this anymore. It's been a lot of fun. I think that lasted about four weeks. But then we had the backup with the bartending anyway. But I was trying the two job. This kid always worked. Always. Since I was, I don't know, a little whippersnapper running around Kendall Point in Miami and trying to wash windows and stuff. Always working. Always working. All kinds of different restaurants, all kinds of bars, all kinds of things you need cash money when you're young and you're a kid and you got your car and you're going out to the strip and all this stuff going on you need gas money you need money to do stuff with you gotta go on a date you gotta pay ah uh, so i was like no problem i enjoyed all the places i worked and there's going to be a million stories coming out of all this but i wanted to tell you about scarlett o'hara's my crazy paper route with the, uh, the car and the line drive, breaking a couple windows on the second floor. Third floor, I, third floor was probably my favorite. Now, just to go back on the paper thing real quick, the lighter papers aren't necessarily easier, especially on a windy day. You take that, I had this sidearm technique. Booty! I had this sidearm technique, and if it was windy, it would take these light papers and fly them all over the place. So, You'd have to sometimes get them out of the hedges. They would fly here, fly there. Now, if you had a second floor number and you threw it and, it, and, the, and the, the, the wind flew it up to the third floor, gotta go get it. You gotta go get it. Then we have to go up, you gotta get it, you gotta bring it back down. But I got it down pretty good to where at least I shaved it down to an hour and a half compared to four hours. But man, when you're young and hanging out and you got to go into work at three in the morning. What was I thinking? But it was kind of cool trying different things. I also had a good buddy of mine was into the papers too. He said he didn't do the route like I did. He had the machines, right? The newspaper machines on the side of the road in front of the stores. And uh, I remember riding in the back of his truck one time and you got to put the inserts into paper. A whole nother technique, whole nother category of the newspaper guy. And you're opening it and you're putting the inserts in there and you're doing it and you start to develop this technique because the inserts are separate, you know, all the junk mail, separate than the news newspaper. And you got to fill them all. So when you go to the machine, you put them in, 
There was even a technique to opening the machine correctly, putting them in. You got to go into the store, tell the guy, 35 papers, I'm taking away 14. Okay, see ya. Back in the truck, on to the next thing. It's work, and it's crazy hours. And God bless the newspaper people <laughs> for doing that. And uh, anyway, we turned it into fun. We turned it into fun. You got the music blasting. You're doing one guy's driving. The other guy's putting the inserts in the paper. And we're taking turns doing the machines. All good, man. All great experiences. And, um, you know, let me tell you, I don't want to miss something here. I had something here. I wanted to tell you about the Scarlett O'Hara's and my newspaper route. Um, and how I always worked. Oh, man. And um, we're going to we're gonna wrap things up right now. The other topic is a whole other podcast. I can't go down that rabbit hole, but we're going to be talking about lip sync contests and some bars that I worked in and how much fun that was. I'm telling you, I got more stories that I know what to do with. And when we get this phone number hooked up and you call in with your stories, I want you to share a little sing along once in a while. I want you to share some of your fun stories and all this. And then I'm going to be able to share the recording. I can just... Well, yes, I have another phone and I could put it on speaker and we can hear the recording and your little and your voice and have some fun with it and, uh, you know, and pick out the good parts and share it with the world. And I'm going to put in my own two cents and bounce off for your story into one of mine. And I watch how we relate to one another. I don't care if you're seven years old or 90, five. 103. We all have these connecting things. We all played games when we were kids. We all did this when we were middle age. We all did, you know, come on. We all have memories and stuff that intertwine. I'm go, Dean Bodie is going to be the shining light. We're going to have some fun. We don't got to drop a bunch of F-bombs and the this and that and do all this stuff. We're going to keep it clean and keep it fun and keep it happy and funny. Right? The Dean Bodie. Remember, Dean Bodie Podcast. Apple, Spotify, Google, Stitcher, right? All the platforms. Dean Bodie Show, YouTube channel. Don't forget, we're doing our little videos here. They're going to kind of bounce off one another. We're trying a little different. I'm even hoping that I'm in the shot right now. Got my little tripod there. Got my little boom mic on top of the phone. My little thing connecting to the other thing. Who knows? We're going to figure it out as it goes. Oh, your lighting could have been better. Okay, well, we'll turn the light on. This is what we got over here in this studio. We like the rough edges at the Dean Bodie show. Life isn't perfect. Rough edges is where it's at. Of course, I want you to see me, not half of my head. So we're going to find out. But you know me, I'm posting it anyway. I clear my throat and I have to go and uh, go into a conniption. I'm posting it. It's real. We're going to keep it real. And um, that's what I want you to do. Also, we're keeping it real. DeanBodie.com. The website's up. Check it out. You'll see the picture. You'll know it's us. And uh, Bodie's the... She is... Forget about it. Okay? I, I can't... I'm speechless. This is one of my favorite photos, by the way. And, you know, all good. So, listen. COVID schmovid. Pandemic, schmandemic, right? Let's keep moving forward. Find some new things to do. Get out and about. Like, I'll give you an example. In closing, I'm going to give you an example. I went to the store today. Hold on, let me get everything situated here. I went to the store today. Had my mask because I took an Uber. Had my mask and I have my, these black latex gloves and you can use the phone with them and all. Because when I go through the shopping and you're touching a million things, the gloves is easy. Then when you get back, gloves come off into the garbage, ba-boom, with the mask. My point I'm trying to make is I'm not worried about getting it. This kid's immune system, gorilla, okay? Gorilla immune system. Well, yeah, we're taking the vitamin D. Yes, we're taking the vitamin C and the whole food multi-mineral and the whole nine. Of course, the majority of my drinks is fresh water. 90-10 roll. Eat clean 90%, 10% treat. If you have health issues, oh God, Dr. D's dropping knowledge again. 
Hey, what's he doing? Hey, Millie, he's dropping knowledge. He is? Yeah. Okay, so what I'm trying to say is the 90-10 rule. 90% do the right thing, 10% treat. If you have health problems already, heart disease, diabetes, the biggies, come on. You can't be fooling around. You can't be living off of Cheetos and Ben and Jerry's and all that stuff and your immune system uh, pounded into the ground. You got to keep it strong. And this is on a serious note. Do the right thing. All right. Make the treat exactly that. This way you kind of look forward to that once a week. That's it. One meal of the week. That's it. Not treat day, not treat a week. It's one meal to see how you do there. You know, don't go crazy or just go the whole week eating clean. Try something new. And I promise you, you're going to rub off on other people. They're going to see what you're doing. And, you know, you have people with health problems and you got other family members running around eating donuts in their face and all this other stuff, you know, making them miserable. If you do what he's supposed to do, if the whole world ate like a diabetic, the world would be a healthier place. Period. Period. So take that for what it is. It'll drop Dr. D dropping some knowledge there. Oh, happy birthday, Stevie Nicks today. Little Fleetwood Mac. Oh, man, talking about going back in time with that music. But that's, uh, uh, I did post something earlier today. You'll see it. Uh, the Dean Bodie, where I used uh, some Stevie Nicks music on there. Uh, so uh, go ahead. Don't forget to subscribe. I like the other guys on the YouTubers. They go, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the like button and the Dean Bodie, the, <laughs> the air quotes, the Dean Bodie show, YouTube channel, DeanBodie.com website, Dean Bodie podcast. Come on, man. Make it a great day. Um, I hope that this thing comes out good. I'm sure that it's going to be fine and we're going to be doing different fun things and we will talk at you tomorrow. Have a great night. Bye-bye now.